Good evening, and thank you to all who have joined us tonight. My name is Rachel Failer, and I wanted to welcome you to the University of Scranton's virtual open house. I'm excited to introduce you to our distinguished presenters who will be giving you a closer look at our Kanye School of Management. Dr. Kingsley Nanengen is our online uh, program director for the MBA program, and Dr. James Boyle is our online program director for the Master of Accountancy program. Um, our agenda this evening includes information from both of them, but what we also wanted to start with was a little bit about you know, why is an online master's degree, why now, um, and why the University of Scranton? Um, should you have any questions, please feel free to add them to our chat and we'll get to them towards the end of the presentation. Um, and then we'll go over any application deadlines for those interested uh, and any next steps that we may have as well. So without further delay, um, here's Dr. Kingsley Nanengen. Hello, and uh, welcome everyone to this evening's uh, webinar on uh, graduate business programs at the University of Scranton. Uh, my name is Kingsley Nanendran. There's some information about myself on this slide. Uh, my, uh, the, my main research areas are operations research, and right now I'm more interested in supply chain management. And I teach courses in operations, supply chain, as well as business analytics. Uh, so let's get started with the first question, which is uh, why a master's, or why an online master's degree is in business, right? So uh, it looks like a bachelor's degree is no longer a differentiator, right? It looks like everybody has a bachelor's degree. So a master's degree will set you apart from the competition. The, it also provides a nice segue for somebody coming from a non-business background. Let's say you have a degree in uh, English or political science or history or even engineering, right? So if you want to move into a business related career, so a master's degree in business would be a great way to transition into a business career. Thirdly, you learn a lot of skills, right? In the different business function areas, you learn about accounting and operations and finance and so on. Um, let's go to the previous slide now. Sorry, Nicole. Okay, so the, um, uh, we also need to see why we are going to do this in an online format as opposed to a face-to-face -face or residential campus-based format, right? The online format provides convenience and flexibility. You can work according to your own schedule, okay? So our programs are what are called asynchronous, meaning that you can work at your own time and pace, day of the week and uh, time of day. However, the programs are paced. What that means is you have weekly deadlines for deliverables, and because they are paced, it'll keep you motivated and on track, okay? The program itself is not lockstep. In other words, it is not cohort-based, meaning that everybody moves you know, together. You can take time off as needed. For example, life events gets in the way. You want to take a semester off here or there, that's fine. All we ask is that you complete all degree requirements within six years of the date of admission. Okay, Nicole, next slide, please. Okay, uh, the next question, of course, is why choose the University of Scranton? First of all, we have a superior faculty and curriculum. First of all, our faculty have all, almost all of them have terminal degrees from the leading business schools. Uh, and I have a list here of the schools. Uh, let me look at the list. It's, uh, they are from Penn State, Temple, Virginia Tech, Florida, Brown, Boston University, Tennessee, Kennesaw State, UMass, Wisconsin, Madison, Rutgers, and SUNY Buffalo. One thing I want to point out about Scranton is that we are a teaching focused school. Sure, we expect our faculty to be scholars and publish uh, you know, the latest research and keep abreast of the uh, you know, findings in their field. However, Faculty hiring and retention decisions at the University of Scranton are primarily based on teaching. That is non-negotiable, right? And a second point I want to make is that the faculty who teach in the online program are for the most part the same faculty who teach in our bricks and mortar campus-based residential programs. Second is that we are an AACSB accredited school. Now, this is important because this is the gold standard for business schools. Only 5% of business schools worldwide have this distinction. There are many other accolades, but I want to point out a couple of them. 
For the past 16 years, Princeton Review has listed the Kenya School as one of the best business colleges. And finally, for the last 27 years, the University of Scranton has been listed as one of the top 10 master's institutions in the North. This has been for the last 27 consecutive years. There's also the Jesuit tradition, uh, which uh, emphasizes ethics and social responsibility, which means to you as a student, that means that uh, the way we interact with you, caring for the whole individual, right, is, is driven by this Jesuit tradition and also our curricula, our courses, right, uh, informed by this Jesuit tradition. There will be personal attention and support. Each one of you on admission will be assigned a faculty mentor. There will be a student services coordinator. And we have a lots of supporting services such as student support, uh, student support coordinator, financial aid, career services, library and reference services. There's also writing assistance available. There's tutoring available for basic math. Uh, okay, another point I want to make here is that flexibility and choice. So there are a lot of elective courses in all our programs and specializations. So if you want to tailor it to your particular needs, you can do so, okay? Uh, Nicole, so on. Okay, now let's take a look at the MBA curriculum. So it starts with the cornerstone course. Then we have seven core courses in the different function areas. Then you move on to the electives. There are three electives. And then there's a capstone course, which brings everything together, which kind of integrates and kind of uh, integrates the whole experience. First, let me talk about the cornerstone course. It is MGT 501, the title of which is Responsibility, Sustainability, and Justice. And we, these are the three themes that we, then the other courses in the core will pick up on these as appropriate to their courses. Okay, now the core has seven functional areas. And once you're done with the core, you move on to the electives, which is in the area of specialization. So you could be specializing in accounting or finance or information systems, et cetera. We have each specialization, which I will get into later. And then finally, we have a capstone course, which is MGT 509. And the one point I want to emphasize about the MBA is that it's a broad-based business degree, okay? If you want to specialize in a particular, if you want to do a really a deep dive beyond the specialization offered by the MBA, then you can look into one of the specialized master's degrees, one of which is being featured today, webinar, right, which is the Master of Accountancy. We also have a couple of other master's specialized programs, one in business analytics, MS Buan, and there's one in finance, which is MSF. So if you really want to specialize in one particular area, that's what you want to do. But the MBA is more of a broad-based business degree. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, uh, so the, here's the MBA course. After you do the cornerstone course, you move into the seven functional area courses. So for example, if you're doing accounting, you might learn about financial reporting process and analysis of financial statements. In operations, you might learn about forecasting, aggregate planning, uh, quality management, GIT, lean, et cetera. In information systems, you might talk about business processes, enterprise systems, databases, cloud computing, uh, social media, e-commerce, things like that. In organizational behavior, we are talking about managing people, which means leading, empowering, communicating, motivating, all within a framework of self-awareness. So also focus on personal development. Marketing, we talk about building strong brands and creating and delivering customer value. In economics, you look at demand and supply, um, production and output, cost and pricing, as well as globalization. In finance, you might be looking at something like discounted cash flows. You might be studying bond and stock valuations. You might study capital budgeting. So these are the different functional areas. We have seven areas. So you take the cornerstone, then you learn about all the different function areas of business, and then you move to the electives. You take your three electives, and then finally, you will take the capstone course, which is called Business Policy, MGT 509, where it is focused on overall corporate strategy. 
So you look at industry level and firm level analysis uh, based on cases. Typically, these are Harvard business cases. There's also one homegrown case. So you will do this case analysis and that brings all these different threads together. Like you bring all of the knowledge you gain in the program to bear on some uh, case problem that you'll be facing in this course. Okay, let's move on to the next slide, Nico. So these are the available specializations. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight specializations, accounting analytics, ERP, finance, healthcare management, HRM, IB and operations management. Okay, again, as I said previously, if you want to go really deep into an area, you probably want to look at a master's. For example, if you take accounting, we have an MBA specialization in accounting. So beyond the broad MBA, if you want to specialize more in accounting, you can take a first step as an MBA specialization. If you want to go really deep, then you want to look at the master's in accountancy. It is not mandatory that you specialize. Uh, you can take your electives from multiple areas, in which case you will get what is called the general MBA, which is even more broad based, right? So you can mix and match the electives that are tailored to your specific needs, whatever your education you're looking for, okay? So next slide, Nicole, please. Okay, we also have a flexible option. So what it means is we are allowing some degree of freedom to you to choose fewer core courses. As I said before, there's one cornerstone, seven core, three electives and one capstone, right? But you can take fewer core classes. For example, instead of taking seven core, you can take six or five or four. By reducing the core courses, you can increase the number of electives you take from three to six, okay? The advantage of doing six electives is that you can fit now two specializations within your MBA. So you can actually dual specialize, or if you don't want to dual specialize, you can just select those electives from multiple areas just to customize or tailor the program to your needs. So this gives you a little bit of flexibility how you want that MBA to look like, okay? It'll match your uh, educational aspirations a little better, right? So that is a feature of the MBA program. So I think that was it, right? So uh, Nicole, is the next slide? Okay, over to you, Jim. Okay, thank you, uh, Kingsley. Uh, I'm Dr. James Boyle. I'm the Masters of Accountancy Program uh, Director. Um, a little bit about my background. I come from uh, public accounting, a practicing CPA, and many of our faculty within the program uh, bring to the, the course worth of business acumen uh, from being involved in various uh, either senior management roles or uh, leadership roles within public accounting. Uh, uh, one, in addition to the director of a master's C program, I find a lot of satisfaction in being the faculty advisor for accounting internships. We have a great number of, of really good employers that come and recruit our students, both from the undergraduate and the MAC program, you know, all of the big, big four, uh, along with other regional and, and national accounting firms, as well as private firms. And we have a very good network with our alumni, very successful alumni, uh, both uh, recent grads and grads and grads have been out in practice for a while. Uh, and I'll talk about in a moment, uh, we meet with those alumni to get their feedback on the content and the approach that we're using within our curriculum to make certain that we're preparing our students the best we can for them to succeed as a financial professional and accounting uh, uh, professional. Uh, the, uh, uh, can we advance the next slide? Okay, within the MAC program, uh, we have three options. There's a general track and there's two concentrations. Uh, the forensic accounting concentration as well as accounting analytics concentration. Um, I'll get through the, the coursework associated with each one of these uh, concentrations. Uh, the general option sort of has some core classes and electives and depending upon what your career goals are, for example, many of our students like to become CPAs. They may be transitioning from uh, another professional uh, area in practice, and we could accommodate that as well. So you could kind of tailor your 
uh, electives uh, to whatever your career goals are. And, and I'm certainly as a director available to talk to you about that. We have a wonderful advising center that assists our students in terms of moving through the program and you know, considering and, and taking advantage of the courses that that's being offered. So we have the two concentrations and we also have a bridge option that's indicated there. And this is a very popular feature in our program. We have a number of students that may not have an accounting undergraduate degree, but they have typically some other type of undergraduate degree, maybe marketing or finance or management. And they're in their practice, they may be in an accounting position or want to move into an accounting position, but they don't have that undergraduate degree in accounting. We have within our program and within the online program, uh, certain bridge courses that students can take. And essentially it's three intermediate accounting courses to sort of enable you with a business degree, typically that's not accounting, you know, to sort of bridge your way and, and take the information that you would have taken as an undergraduate accounting major, and then move right through and very expeditiously, typically within 18 months, uh, complete your master's degree in accounting. And some of these students also, and professionals, young professionals or other professionals, uh, are wanting to move into uh, become a CPA or other leadership role within an organization. As we mentioned, uh, the courses are, are taught by practitioners and, and, and uh, academics, uh, many CPAs and other terminal degrees. Uh, as you know, Dr. Kingsley has mentioned, it's an online format, flexible. Uh, it, the MAC program enables students to satisfy the 150 hours requirement uh, for the CPA. Uh, and nor typically an undergraduate degree, even in accounting does not uh, provide that. And it's, of course, we have, uh, as I say, a great group of uh, alumni that are very successful, big four partners and managers and other public accounting and private uh, uh, leaders in, in practice that, that help us and they provide internships and jobs for our students. Uh, Rachel, would you advance? Uh, just we're very proud of our, our MAC program has been nationally recognized, uh, best colleges ranked as number, number one online MAC program in the country. Uh, particularly that I enjoy and was very satisfied that we were recently recognized as the top 15 online master's accountancy program uh, with the best CPA first time pass rates. Uh, we have uh, certain courses within the curriculum, for example, advanced taxation, advanced accounting, as an example, where we integrate some of the uh, CPA practice questions and content. Now, it's not a specific CPA review course, but we integrate them within quizzes, within assignments, within exercises. So it gives students a, uh, a, a step ahead in terms of if that's their eventual career goal. So we're very proud of that. Uh, Rachel, or, or whoever's advancing, I'm sorry. There might, there might be somebody else advancing in the background. Uh, this is just sort of an uh, one sort of at a glance look at the, the general program, the MAC program. We have five core classes. And if you notice uh, in the core classes, and this is again, feedback from our alumni, we have technical accounting type content, but we also have professionalism, you know, leadership skills, communication skills, ethics, which is consistent with our Jesuit mission as well. Uh, and in these courses, the students really love them. And I teach accounting communication. That's really, I teach a lot of accounting classes. I'm auditing by background. But I really enjoy the accounting communications because, you know, one, we set students in assignments where they would find themselves in financial uh, in a financial position. They may be presenting to a board or looking at an earnings call or presenting to an audit committee. And we kind of sort of role play and, and, and the content itself, it, it, I think is very interesting and uh, for the students and informative, but also we provide feedback on effective writing skills and oral communication skills which is essential and really important. Uh, and we got that feedback from our alumni. So we, we have sort of a mix of uh, technical skills along with uh, you know, sort of those professionalism skills. And the Accounting 550 is our capstone class uh, where similar to sort of the MBA where they have a, a capstone class that they kind of integrate everything that we learned during the course. And we have a, a, a comprehensive uh, you know, project, you know, that, that and paper that's prepared to sort of integrate a lot of the elements that we learned throughout the program. And in the general track, you're able to select five electives here. 
We have a number of accounting, uh, fraud-based types electives, and also data analytics uh, electives as well. Uh, so that's, uh, that's our sort of our general track, 30 credits. There are some students that may had a graduate class or, or two that, that may be able to substitute uh, if they have that coming in. And that's certainly something we would consider and look at as well. Right, can we advance to the next slide, please? These are the two uh, concentrations, the forensic accounting concentration to the left here and to the right, the accounting analytics concentration. And I will say that many of these courses that are offered here, uh, you can also take them as electives within the general uh, uh, track as well. So forensics, which is a very popular concentration that we have, sort of prescribes the 15, uh, I'm sorry, the 30 credits, the, the, uh, the 10 courses here that are required for that concentration. And you can see the focus on financial reporting fraud, occupational fraud and abuse, uh, advanced auditing is a required course within that concentration. Uh, so that's one option. And also the analytics concentration, if that interests you. Uh, we have the core classes sort of say the same, but we require the uh, two additional analytic classes. And among your electives, you're going to be selecting from data analytic courses. Uh, advance to the next slide, please. Okay, this is the, the MAC bridge, or we call it provisional program, where, uh, again, some folks may not have had uh, an accounting degree undergrad uh, where they can transition and be, have a master's degree in accounting. Typically, we require uh, taking what we call accounting 505, 506, and 507, was it's intermediate one, two, and three. And this is sort of a deep dive. I mean, this mm -hmm. is where you need to you know, prepare and, and we really, it's a comprehensive, so get ready to, to, to work hard, but that's what, you know, the professionals that are coming in are very highly motivated and, and they're very successful in working through the program. Uh, so this enables you to sort of take these three additional classes. By doing that, we, tip, we, we would waive accounting 540, which is one of the core classes. So I have here also accounting 502 and it may be waived depending upon your coursework and your undergraduate degree. Uh, typically, if you had an, a financial and a managerial accounting class, which most of our students do, if they have a non-accounting business degree, they may would have had some basic accounting. This course is usually waived, the 502. Uh, so we have nine credits here. One of the other core classes is waived. So usually the total credits for the bridge program is 36. If 502 is not waived, uh, suppose you didn't, you're coming in from a completely different area, then it could be 39 credits. Uh, but it gives you that, that option. And the, the core classes are listed here and you would select four electives in this case. Okay, the, the next slide, please. Okay, I just sort of provide this for information. As I say, we have very good alumni and they, they, they recruit our students. They, they know the, the education they're getting and they sort of, uh, whatever the area, we bring that business acumen to our students. The job opportunities are, are, have been very positive and they're anticipated to grow. So, uh, so this is just sort of information in terms of how exciting a career in accounting a fina financial professional uh, can be both uh, uh, rewarding in many ways. So uh, we have a really good group of, of employers who come on campus. Uh, can we advance to the next slide? Okay, as I mentioned, uh, we have so many success stories and they wanna come back and help our students. And uh, you know, uh, this is one example of a recent grad, but we have uh, many examples. And we actually have a group, the Accounting Department Professional Alumni Council, we call it the ADPAC that meets periodically and we're very active. And our chair of our department, Dr. Douglas Boy, along with the, the people who teach in the program, uh, we really listen to them very closely because they're hiring our students. And for example, in auditing, I teach auditing, advanced auditing. I wanna talk to, I have a number of people, I've come from that background, but I'm not in that in practicing now. I keep abreast as to what the latest techniques they're using, the approaches, and I wanna integrate that within the classroom. And I think that's why uh, the employers really like to, to, uh, to recruit our students because we have that nice connection. I think that was my last slide. Uh, okay, and okay. thank you very much for your attention. Appreciate it. 
Thank you both so much. Um, for those interested in applying, we have a couple of deadlines coming up for the rest of this year. Um, fall A classes begin um, just a couple of weeks from now on the 30th, and the deadline to get all your information and documents in would be um, the 19th. And then for fall B classes, um, they begin on October 25th, and the application deadline is the 14th of October. And I think we do have a couple of questions for, for both of you. Um, I think one of the most, um, the most asked question is, um, how much time would we devote, um, or how many hours a week would we devote um, as a student to um, the programs, the different programs? Well, in the MBA program, uh, we advise students that uh, they should uh, budget 10 to 15 hours a, a week for each class. So if they're taking one class, they should be expecting to devote 10 to 15 hours on their reading and assignments, et cetera. That's our advice in the MBA program. Mac, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think it, 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 yeah. similar, I would say, and it depends on the background of the student in the particular course. Certainly some consistent effort each week, as Dr. Kingsley had mentioned earlier, there's typically weekly deliverables you know, there's discussion forums, there's papers, there's assignments, there could be quizzes. And usually uh, in our programs at the end of the week, they're, they're typically due and we provide feedback. And so, yes, it, it varies depending. I would say the intermediate classes may be more, maybe yeah. less than some other ones, but, uh, but yeah, 10, 10 hours, yeah, maybe is an average. Yep. Great, fantastic. Um, I know, um, Dr. Boy, you had talked about this uh, at length about the prerequisites for the courses, but Dr. Kingsley, are there any for the MBA program? Yes, we do have what I call foundation modules. So if somebody comes from a non-business background, uh, the, uh, we will look at the undergraduate transcript and then assign what I call these foundation modules, which are one credit each and run only for four weeks. There are 12 such modules and the modules are in the areas of things like statistics, accounting, business law, management, marketing, economics, finance, et cetera. So we look at the undergraduate transcript and if you had taken, if the student or the applicant had taken a previous course in that area, then that would be waived. So for example, if we had taken business law, then business law will be waived. If not, we will ask you to take that particular module. These modules are only four weeks long, they're intensive, but only four weeks long uh, and they're worth one credit. It's about three credits. So it's kind of, a quick way to bring you up to speed, uh, if you will. So for most people, if you do have a business background, a business degree, uh, most of those uh, modules will be waived. We also waive it based on experience. So if you are working in a particular, for example, you have been managing people, then we would waive the management module. If you have been working in sales or marketing, we would waive the marketing module. So there's possibility of getting this waived based on coursework or based on your work experience. And the good news is, from what I understand, Dr. Kingsley, is like you don't have to go to another school, then take an extra course. You can do this while you're taking the MBA uh, program, correct? Yes, you could do it either way. You can take it with us. Uh, it'll be one credit. Or you can go to a local school close by, maybe a community college. But with that option, I would suggest that you check with us. Send us the course description or the website link, and then we can take a look and say this is an appropriate course, and we would give you like a pre-approval, and then you can take this class and transfer those credits in. So either or, uh, if you feel it's more convenient to take it at a local school near your home, that's fine. So it's up to you whether you want to take it with us or elsewhere. Yeah, and just to, a quick add on to that, that, that's similar to the MAC program. Typically, a, a, a B or better is, is usually required in the course as well. Great, perfect. Um, so a lot of students also, um, are they wonder if they do an online program, is it the same as it is on campus? And would, would it, as you, when you graduate, does it differentiate on your degree? Well, the diploma will just say, in, in the case of MBA, it will just say Master of Business Administration. It will not say what uh, mode of delivery was, whether it was on campus or online, nor will it say the specialization. The specialization will only appear on the transcript. The diploma simply reads Master of Business Administration. I guess the same thing for the MAC, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. Y yes, it's the same for the Mac as well. And we, we try to replicate the, the in-class experience as much as possible, you know, with the recent pandemic situation, we're using more and more Zoom uh, type uh, interactions as well. Uh, but yeah, we, through discussions and through the assignments themselves, we, we try to uh, understanding that many of our students are are busy professionals and there this program allows them to sort of do assignments and, and other activities when it's convenient for them because they have a number of uh, you know responsibilities both work and professional responsibilities so it's certainly that flexibility is there and and also uh, we try to you know sort of uh, bring some of the the, the in-class benefits as well to the to the delivery Great. Um, so a lot of students, um, I know some come in with some sort of, sort of experience doing something online, whether it's through um, any kind of continuing education credits or anything, but um, if they haven't taken an online class before, um, they kind of want to know what the experience is like. Um, can either of you speak to, to what it's like being sort of being an online um, student? I know Dr. Kingsley had mentioned there's, you can do it asynchronously. Um, but can you expound on that? Yes, what that means is that uh, there will be material posted online. And if it's an eight week course, you will only get to see one week at a time. The, the material is revealed one week at a time. Uh, and also the, so for example, if you uh, sign up for a course, the course typically starts on a Monday. So that Monday, the first week will open up, but the second week opens up on the following Friday. So for the second week and beyond, you will actually have uh, nine days to complete your work because you have the five weekdays, the weekend before and the weekend after. So after the second week onwards, you have nine days. What happens is when you see the week open, you will see that there is a discussion forum typically where you'll have to make a discussion post, initial post by the Wednesday. And then between the Wednesday and the Sunday, you'll have to make a response post uh, to other students' postings, you have to read them and, and post. So that is typically the, the timeline, right? You have something due on Wednesday and something due on Sunday. And then most courses also have, in addition, some kind of individual assignment, uh, be it solving some problems or writing an article review or something like that, which is done individually. And that is something also that will be due on the closing Sunday of the week, okay? Another good thing about the, uh, I'm not sure whether I mentioned this, but in the online format, you get to see students from all over the country, right? Because we draw students from all over the country, you get to see students from different industries, different walks of life, different functional areas, different levels, different types of uh, organizations. So you will have a lot of opportunities to network, more so than you will have in a residential program because you, you are drawing from pretty much from the whole country, right? We have students from all 50 states in the MBA program, yeah. Yep, that's an excellent yeah. point. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's everything that Dr. Kingsley had mentioned is, is similar to in the, the MAC program with the Sunday, typically the due dates for the weekly assignments. In terms of interaction with other students, there are group projects as well, team type of, of, of interaction. Uh, and there's a, a student lounge as well that, that students who could kind of get to know themselves, uh, one another you know, with the various backgrounds. And, and I think in the discussion fo uh, forum itself, uh, that, I mean, I, I learn a lot from, from our students in terms of what they're doing, whatever the assignment might be, they, they'll sort of bring their own business acumen or knowledge from practice. And that, that make one of the things that makes it really enjoyable and informational for me as well. Yeah, I get, a lot, I get that a lot too from MBA faculty, right? That they learn so much from the students, especially yep. in the discussion mm -hmm. forums because they come from different, the students always have a different take on things, right? So you post the question you're expecting a certain answer, but then you're surprised that they come up with a totally different perspective on this. And so mm -hmm. you learn so much, yes, that's great. And I think the students, from what I understand, they sort of learn from each other because some could be in a higher management position. Yes. Some could be just starting out. So they, all of that rich experience is shared within a course. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all the questions that we had for this evening. Um, our next steps are here. Here's if you follow the link provided um, um, on the page, you can go to the graduate admission site. You can um, <clears throat> fill out the application. That application will then go through our system, and then someone will call you within a, a, within 24 to 48 hours 
and talk to you about the program and sort of walk you through all the next steps that you'll need and any, any additional questions that you have. Um, thank you both so much for being here this evening. Um, I, this was a great experience for me as well, but I know that everybody's appreciated it um, who had joined us this evening. So thank you so much and take care. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank Bye. you.